Hi, and welcome to Sunday Night Charts. We take a look at the charts to help you with the trading week ahead. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and two things impacting the markets this week. One, it will be a shortened trading week due to the Thanksgiving holiday. Expect minimal trading action on Wednesday and Friday. It is normal that major traders head home from Wall Street for the weekend. The problem is, they're already home, and uh, their family's probably not coming. So, but, but just expect... Uh, lighter than normal trading. Also keep in mind the Fed has two QE purchases this week, Monday and Tuesday. There will be no purchases on Wednesday or Friday. The last QE purchase for the month will be on Monday. Two of those happen to be on the long bond. Trend indicator short term on the nine day intermediate 21 days, long term 50 and ultra long term 100. The moving average is on my screen by color. 50 days green, 100 day is blue, 200 day is tan. And price versus momentum. Price is a general direction. Prices are headed. Momentum is the rate of change. A bullish indicator for both is positive and a bearish indicator for both is negative. Momentum often, but as you will see in today's stuff, uh, it often but does not always lead price. Do keep in mind, tactical analysis attempts to determine where buyers and sellers are at. Resistance is a level buyers can't break and support is level sellers can't break or resistance is where sellers are at and support is where buyers are at. Technical analysis does not predict prices. It can be used to determine the risk of a trade, help with timing a trade and provide the direction to the path of least resistance. Charting offers possibilities, not probabilities and absolutely not certainties, my friends. All right, let's get into the S&P 500. Not much change in the chart here. You see price is still bullish. Uh, on the short through long term bearish did, or ultra long term stayed bearish. The only flip we got is on the short term. We see a flip to the bearish on momentum. And it's not a surprise. We're sitting right back near all time highs on the S&P 500. But let's take a look at the charts because it certainly is looking like we're at a potential double top. We have a top coming back here in early September. Potential now top here forming, remember the last two weeks, largest inflow into U.S. equities in the history of the markets. And yet we do not make new all-time highs. We briefly did for one day, but sitting right back down, not a positive sign. When you see a record flow of money coming into equities and you don't see price moving up, it tells you somebody on the other end is at least selling. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. And on the short term, we see uh, no change except on momentum. And on the intermediate term, they both traded sides. So momentum is completely bearish across the board. Price is nearly bullish across the board. <coughs> Again, no surprise here that price is sitting, you know, pushing higher. Meanwhile, momentum is saying, eh, the trend is slowing, the trend is slowing. And you can see from a momentum perspective, the change in price is indeed slowing but price is up over the last uh, couple weeks. So that again is why we're seeing those kind of bullish flags on price, but not seen on momentum. And so here you see the, S uh, the NASDAQ, not the S&P is coiling, potentially coiling higher or lower. Hard to say which direction this is gonna go. Price as it goes up, momentum saying it's slowing down and perhaps signaling a reversal. Let's move on to the small caps. The Russell 2000, well, if there was ever anything on this show that was bullish, it's small caps and people are bullish on America. You see momentum is bullish across the board. The only thing that's not is the ultra long term on price. And who knows, that could flip pretty quick to bullish. Let's take a look at the Russell who saw new all time highs last week. Again, you see investors are buying America, they're buying on vaccine hopes, the economy completely reopening, and not only going back to where it was before the pandemic, but even higher. That seems very bold strategy. The question is, will it pay off for investors? I'm not sure, but you can see the trend is your friend. It is rising. Momentum says it's rising. Everything says small caps are what we expect them to be rising the question is how long will that continue to hold don't know uh, energy sector xle when remember it was not too long ago it was completely red now it's mostly green as everyone's resumed being bullish on energy again this pent up demand in the economy that's going to drive crude oil prices higher maybe it will maybe it won't well, we can see from a technical perspective, it bounced off support several weeks ago, blew through that resistance zone, 
and right up into resistance where prior sellers were at, just so happens to be its 200 day moving average. Remember bottoms are a process, not an event. So if this is indeed a bottom in the energy sector, you should expect price to come back down to the recent lows, maybe back to the all time lows from uh, what about a year ago. Do, that is not something you should uh, discount at this point. But again, bottoms are processes and you can see this is a process that is forming along here and we'll see where this goes. But at the moment, the 200 day moving average is acting as resistance and we'll see what's going on with energy because look at crude, you know, crude really hasn't gone anywhere. And I mean, maybe in what the last four months, it hasn't gone anywhere. Okay. Six months it's up a little bit, but sitting between 40 and 42 a barrel, with global economies being pushed back into lockdown and new restrictions, everyone still remains very bullish on this you know, pent up demand in the energy sector. But there's one sector that doesn't believe it. It's the energy sector. And that's why my friends, they're laying off. If they thought crude oil prices were going higher, keep that in mind. If you thought the Chevrons and Exxons and Shells and all these major companies, if they really thought that prices were headed higher, why are they cutting 10 to 15% of their workforce? It doesn't make any sense unless you understand that they believe demand is not coming back that quick. How about financial stocks? Boy, you couldn't have, um, well, I thought the energy sector was bullish. Look at the financial sector. Everyone thinks again, interest rates are headed higher and that will be bullish for our financial stocks that broke through resistance and are now, but maybe they're forming a big island up here that will get reversed. What's notable here is that generally you see interest rates and financial stocks as treasury yields and financial stocks move the same direction if we look at the 30 year treasury yield it's headed lower and yet financial stocks haven't budged suggesting that perhaps the likely direction for for financial stocks is lower but again everyone is very bold up on this whole reflation theme and that's a dangerous thing when everyone's got the same view markets usually go the opposite direction. Utilities, once almost all green across the board, now see a little bit of bearish signal on the short term. Not a major change here. You'll kind of see there's not a lot of major changes in the charts today. How about industrials? You know, again, equities back near their all-time high. Industrials, you know, nearly green across the board. Everybody is super bullish on the U.S. economy except when it comes to gold miners. Now, I know some of you are like, this can't be. We're seeing all red on GDX. This is bad. This can't happen. I know the market is very bullish on gold. Believe me, my gold bug friends, as a bond bull, I know what it's like to see red on your screen and believe that you're right when, this, when the technicals and everything are telling you you're completely wrong. Short-term indicators uh, flip to bearish. The whole picture is bearish. Let's take a look at GDX. And I'm believing, I, I see the sentiment. I see people talking about this on FinTwit. They don't understand how prices can be going down uh, when gold mining companies are showing a profit, something they generally don't often do. And yet prices are continuing to held, head down. As we talked about in Friday's show about the bottom, double bottom now, not that I counted as a double bottom in real yields or inflation adjusted yields. And that's usually not good for gold or gold mining stocks because they generally trade inversely. So here we see this still, this could be a bullish flag, but it's in the danger zone of breaking down below the 200 day moving average, getting into perhaps a little more support uh, where prior buyers were at back down in say the $32 range on GDX. I get that nobody wants to see this because everyone's super bullish on this sector. I still believe we're going to see prices back down uh, where they were at their pandemic lows is what I kind of expect we'll see out of the gold mining sector. Maybe I'll be right. Maybe I'll be wrong. Some of you are looking to say, hey, the last time you showed me all red screen, it turned out to be bullish. Maybe there's your signal. How about we look at emerging markets? They have been very bullish. Not much change here. We see the long-term flip to bullish, the short-term flip to bearish. Not a, not a big change because price on EEM, again, here's your reflation trade. Everyone is super bullish on emerging markets and no real change on that. So we'll put it back where it was, but you can see price somehow continues to grind higher as there simply is no concern about global liquidity or any events that could shake the markets. 
People are very bullish here and they're bullish at very high prices that have usually signal major reversals in the EEM space. Let's take a look at what we have next, I think is, ah, long-term treasury bonds, my friend, the TLT. How can we not love this? Because, well, I'm the bond king. And uh, even though this isn't the bond show today, let's see what happens. We're seeing the short term and intermediate term price flip bullish. Momentum on the intermediate term is bullish. I'll imagine the short term momentum on moment, uh, short term momentum will flip bullish probably early next week. The longer term trends are still bearish. Let's take a look at TLT and see what's going on here. And what you see is it bounce out of this heavy zone of buyers. Now, how do you know this is where buyers are at? Because zoom out your chart and you'll see every time price gets down here, buyers have come in. Whether, whether you think it's the Fed or anyone else, it doesn't matter. Buyers have consistently been down here. And when you have this massive run of selling that goes all the way back to August, right? You have almost four months of selling. I know it's about three and a half. But anyway, you have heavy selling. We see heavily speculative selling. We see retail selling. We see everybody's short the bond market. And what happens is price is moving up on low volume. It tells you there isn't much of a short squeeze building yet. You, the sellers are very convicted about their trades, just as I'm very convicted about my research being right. And so we broke through the 50 day moving average for those who like moving average crossovers. You see the 200 day moving average still pointed up would like to see it cross there and get through some of this resistance. So still a heavy amount of resistance at 165-ish. You start to break through there. And you know you can't always use technicals for everything, but when you know there's heavy sellers in here and they're gonna hold their positions, they held their positions almost all the way up to the peak before. Well, the longer they hold those positions, the bigger the squeeze, the bigger the upside for TLT, and uh, we'll expect next week to see more upside in that move. Let's go on to high yield bonds. Uh, no real change here at all. I mean, almost none. The, the short term momentum flip bearish, but that's not a big deal at all. Let's take a look at high yield bonds. You know, these follow equities higher and well, they really haven't. I mean, they're not making new all time highs. They're not even back at their all time highs and people are paying a huge premium to own high yield bonds because the yield they're getting for the risk that they don't know they're taking, which is way more than they know, it, it, it's high. Especially now that the Fed has been notified by Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, as we covered on Friday, that hey, all that money that you can use to backstop the bond market, not the Treasury bond market, the corporate and high yield bond market, you're gonna be sending that back to the Treasury and that program's coming to an end, so you should expect the high yield bonds, which rallied on the news that, that the Fed was going to support this sector. Well, you should expect it to head lower. Let's take a look at gold. Well, no surprise, it's bearish across the board on gold. Uh, the gold mining uh, picture on GDX gave us that preview. And the most likely next area of support for gold is around this 1800 1820 level right the 200 day moving average if it fails to hit hold there you're looking around 1750 1760 not a lot of buyers were at around that 18 to 1820 there just weren't a lot there so the question is will some of these people that were buyers start to become sellers how about silver well slightly better picture we see a lot of flips on price now we see it bearish across the board momentum is a mixed bag uh, with some little small changes there between the short and intermediate term let's take a look at silver where there you are and similar picture to gold it's under the 50-day moving average finding resistance there under the 100-day moving average which was an area of support telling us that silver is going to likely retest its recent lows around say the 22 to $23 range. If it doesn't hold there, uh, it's got a long ways down. I mean, there's not a lot to keep silver from getting back down to the 18s. There's not, I mean, if, if, if there aren't buyers coming in here soon, well, there certainly aren't a lot of levels of support to hold this up. A little bit of support right here on just under 20, but a lot of your sports right down there at 18. How about we go on to the dollar, which will be the wrecking ball for the precious metals crew. And uh, we'll see if we get that prediction right at some point. Price is bearish across the board. Momentum is a mixed bag, 
but that doesn't tell you the big picture in the dollar is the global shortage. And the fact that the dollar happens to fall, bond price is higher, it's been stuck around the support at 92, 92, 92, 92, four times. The dollar hasn't been able to break that, suggesting that if sellers can't get the dollar to go lower, remember, sell, what are we seeing in the markets? We talked about this Friday, investors are pulling money out of cash, they're selling cash, selling dollars to buy equities or risk assets. And despite that persistent selling, of dollars, you've seen buyers of dollars. What does that tell you? Once the buyers have mopped up all of that selling, guess where prices is likely prices are likely to head. I know many people are bearish on the dollar, but believe me, when you can't break this range, the likely direction is higher, not lower. Oh, and we have, I forgot, Bitcoin, because I don't have a slide on that. Now, remember, I don't hold a position in Bitcoin. You've seen a big parabolic run here. And here's the story on Bitcoin. Either you're going to have the mother of all double tops, which we've seen, you know, prior top around uh, 20650 So getting pretty close there. Maybe, maybe it runs up uh, $2,000 in the next couple of weeks. Or... Because I don't know anyone that's bearish on Bitcoin, not a single person. I don't know anybody, and I'm personally neither bullish nor bearish, no opinion. Again, don't own it. It's not a registered proc, so I can't, I can't buy it. The question is, since no one is bearish on Bitcoin, everyone believes this is the last move before it breaks the prior all-time high and goes to somewhere well past infinity and then beyond, well past. Or it's the biggest double top that we've ever seen. And that, my friends, will certainly be interesting to watch that play out. Of course, I wish all my friends who are irresponsibly long Bitcoin, and I know many of you are, I wish it for you the best. I hope it, I hope it works out. Do keep in mind, a lot of risk here if we see whoever was selling here comes back. All right, well, thanks for watching. We'll be back with you on Monday, as always, with the Macro Show. The content of this video is provided as education and information only. It's not intended to provide investment or other advice. It's not to be construed as a recognition or solicitation by a selling security and financial instrument or to participate in any particular training strategy. It's very well spared by Steam Van Meter. Personal capacity opinions expressed in the video that are new, not reflect the value of financial advising or Steam Van Meter Financial.